Welcome back to more Dangan Run, but to goodbye to Spar. On to see Monokuma in this class trial. Oh dear. Haha, <laughs> this is the place we couldn't go last time. Huh? Are you kidding me? Hey, what the heck is that mountain? W when did I get there? Never mind that, how did they even make a mountain shaped like Monokuma? That's a good question. That story, that story might be true after all. There might be an enormous organization involved in all this. You mean what Byakuya said before, right? You are right. Byakuya, we still need his knowledge. Yeah, yeah I can't believe he's dead. <laughs> Byakuya, 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 Byakuya. What happened to Gundam and Fuyuhiko? How do you mention it? It appears they aren't here yet. I got it! I know, they are probably ran away. No way! Oh, hell no! There's no way to let them escape, you know. Look, I dragged this one back over here. Don't fuck with me! I I'm telling you, let me go. Hey! Huh? And now, if you keep acting violent, I might just eat you up. Hey! Hey, Fuyuhiko, where were you- or what were you doing all this time? Huh? Nothing, I was really doing nothing. I was just chilling in my room when I suddenly heard that fat bastard got killed. So, who the fuck cares about that anyway? You, how can you say something so irresponsible? You We've been doing our best to investigate this murder even though we don't want to, just to survive. Wait. My hero, that's enough. You too, Fuyahiko. Say, <laughs> dumbass. Um. And I guess we're waiting for Gundam? What happened? I'm right here. Remember this well, a main character arrives when he intends to. Huh? Hey. Seems you noticed it too. If I did, then I'm right. Well, then. All right, now that everyone's all together, just take the secret entrance to the trial field. Wait! Please wait a second. What's this? My, my, mommy, just what are you doing here? Nobody asked for you. I, I, I. What? Hmm? Do you actually want to join in? You Do you want to taste how powerless you are at the class trial? You're an even bigger masochist than I thought. Special bleeding. Oh well, I'm a big brother who don't his little sister! I shall allow you special participation! See ya later! Oh god, I had to wait for you guys, so hurry over! Huh? <laughs> he told us to come, but how do we get there? I don't see any doors or vehicles! What's going on? He mentioned something about a secret entrance, was it? Secret entrance? Oh, don't tell me! What the? Something's shaking. This is dangerous, everyone! Please get down! Hit the dart! This game just gets more and more unrealistic as it goes. Something came out! Crippy, is he telling us to enter it? What? So such suspicious aura, even Crimson Steel Elephant Mega Z is trembling with fear. Wow, that's so totally suspicious! Hey, 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 hey! Forgive me, seriously, just forgive me already! Uh, <laughs> Why don't we just stop here? I mean, none of this is real anyway. Like, not even remotely. No way, no way, no way! There's no way, there's just no way we'll find the killer! Stupid! C -c Complaining won't get us anywhere. If you're really a man, then man up for God's sakes. We've come this far, we have no choice but to keep moving forward. You're right, there's nowhere for us to run. We need to do it. Mm -hmm. If that's everyone's decision, I'll just follow you guys. If this were a video game, it'd have a very high difficulty level. Let's do our best to clear the game. Huh, okay. Shaking with fear and nervousness, I hesitantly lifted my feet and stepped onto the escalator. I'm questioning the stability of it, too. I won't think anymore. If I think, I'll run away. 
All I could do was stare upwards intensely as the escalator carried me. Now, not thinking probably isn't a good idea either. We kind of need that brain. When each of us entered Monokuma Rock... Oh! Is he gonna blast off? Nope. Hey, the elevator's back! This is an elevator! No shit! I see, this entire rock is an elevator! Once again, Monokuma's doing whatever he pleases. However, However if he's gone this far to make something like this, I don't think he's just playing around. And so we're going pretty deep. You're right. I heard an unnerving, chattering sound inside my head. I soon realized it was the sound of my teeth. And then I'm still a wuss. All I could do was purse my lips tightly so everyone else couldn't hear. <laughs> That's what I thought it'd be, not <laughs> teeth shattering. There we were, listening to unpleasant roars as the elevator plunged deeper and deeper into the earth. Some time passed before the elevator finally finished descending. And then the elevator door slowly opened. Okay, welcome! Ta-da! This is the Glass Trial Field. How do you like it? It's a special place that will decide your fate. Are you... Tch, what the hell is he thinking? Locking us in a shitty looking place like this. Don't fuck with me! Are you fucking crazy? Don't mess with me, asshole. <laughs> Come play all you like, but I'm used to it by now. <laughs> Come on, you're wasting your time and energy! Are you gonna take your seats where your names are written? Names? Looks like everyone knows, even if we try to resist, it won't change a thing. Just as Monokuma ordered, we walked towards the seats we had been assigned. From this point on, we need to find out who killed Byakuya. Ah, uh, don't remind me. The ultimate affluent progeny, Byakuya Togami. He was overly critical, arrogant, and condescending. But he also had a strong sense of responsibility. As we were panicking, he accepted his role as leader, and tried his very best to keep us together. A guy like him... ...got murdered. The person who did it is one of us? I can't believe it. I don't want to accept it, but it's true. I can't believe it. There's no way I can believe it. No! But if it's really true... We need to find out by any means possible, because that's our only option. There's no way for us to survive unless we sacrifice the killer. And so, this life-threatening trial, belong with hope and despair, has begun. Ah, thank you, yes I would. Alright, so I finished choosing my skills, I bought them from Monomi, we got Extraordinary Focus, Lost in Thought, and Fine Sword. Which, I'm kind of confused about Fine Sword. That seems interesting. Why is Glastral Now then, let's begin with a simple explanation of the class trial. During the class trial, you will present your arguments for who the killer is, and vote for who done it. Monami's just chilling out there, hanging from some rope, you know. If you vote correctly, then only the blackened will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong person, I'll punish everyone besides the blackened. And that person will earn the right to leave this island. S such a cruel rule. Before we begin, I'd like to confirm one thing. Is there really a killer among us? Most definitely! There's no doubt that the Blackened is lurking among you! Such a sad state of affairs, isn't it? By the way, this class trial is gonna be 100% fair! So there's no need to worry! I'm the type who hates favoritism and prejudice. Well, not as much as I hate Monami, of course! Oh, okay. You hate me that much? Let's begin! Y you're telling us to begin, but what are we supposed to do? Monokuma man just brushes Monomi off all the time. No complain, 
Ganon, let's just settle this with our fists. Were you even listening to the rules? Didn't that Byakuya bastard get killed in the dining hall, huh? Then everyone there is a fucking suspect. Yeah, yeah, what you're really trying to say is that you're not the killer, right? No shit. You guys went off on your own and started killing each other. This has nothing to do with me. Huh? What does that mean? Anyway, why don't we try talking about the most pressing issue on our minds? Huh. The most pressing issue on our minds? Where we found the body. It's very strange to find a body underneath the table. Then, let's start with that mystery. The reason why Biokia's body was discovered under the dining hall table. We can start with that, but ultimately, we need to find out who murdered him. No, really? If we can't do that, then we all die! Oh my god! All thinking about if is a waste of time. We have to do this, no matter what. Oh, it's me again, obligatory announcer dude! So the class trial has finally started. From this point on, I will provide simple tutorials at every important moment. I'm sorry, but please excuse my irritating rudeness. <laughs> Okay, you're forgiven. As things progress during the class trial, you will engage in a number of non-stop debates. During these discussions, all of your classmates will speak one after the other without any breaks. It's up to you to reveal any lies or mistakes contained within their statements. This means you'll have to use your truth bullets to refute what they say. But of all the truth bullets you'll find during your investigation, only the relevant ones will be loaded into the truth cylinder. Use the left stick to move the reticle and then fire the triangle button. You can also fire by tapping the statement directly. Now, if you're on PlayStation TV and have a PS4 controller, that will work in the touch screen or touch pad on it is amazing. Just, a, just for a tip there. Anyways, pay close attention to each character's statements and choose your true bullets to blast the right ones. Note that if you run out of time, you will automatically fail, so please be careful. If you press the start button during these arguments, you can review the controls. Well then, good luck and have fun. I will, thank you very much. Make my argument, a knife, a blitz dinner on the table, and gaps in the floorboard. Okay. Why was Byakuya's body in a place like that? His body was underneath the table at the very back of the dining hall. Very strange. After the killer murdered Byakuya, they probably moved the ball. No, no, they didn't. Bad no, Kazuichi. No, I don't think the killer moved the body. Huh? Why? Try to remember what the body looked like when he found it under the table. Though there was a lot of blood everywhere. There was no sign the killer actually dragged the body through. So that's why you think it's impossible that the killer moved the body. I see. I get your point. Oh, and here I thought I had a genius idea. Okay, Hero 2.0. Too bad you're so stupid and boring and unpopular. Your life is meaningless. Oh, well, I'm pretty sure Hero had some uh, people that liked him. Kazuichi has some people, too. I think he's amazing. I respond better to praise, you know. But if the killer didn't move the body, why was it under the table? Yakuya was probably killed under the table. What? You think he was killed under the table? Well, yes, we, we've all stated that a few times now. So Byakuya snuck under the table for reasons unknown, and that's when he was killed. Then, shortly thereafter, we found his body under the table. Th that does make sense, but why did he go under the table? Obviously, he was hiding so he could surprise us. That dude was always a big jokester. Does Akana even have a brain? The hell he was? You seriously couldn't tell what kind of person he was? Hmm. Maybe he panicked during the blackout and dove under the table. It's a blackout, not an earthquake. Just because the power went out doesn't mean he dive under the table. The reason why is probably connected to what Byakuya was doing during the party, don't you think? Yeah, totally. The reason Byakuya dove under the table was... If it's connected to what Byakuya was doing during... Oh, thanks, game. Thanks. I'm trying to read that and it says, nope. Uh, uh-oh. I accidentally hit triangle. <laughs> Everyone's staring. Looks like I just made a fool of myself in front of everyone. Huh, huh. The reason Byakuya dove under the table 
it's connected to what Bakio was doing during the party, then it's probably... There we go. Byakuya has what I meant to say. Oh, display problem. There we go. <laughs> I wasn't looking at the top of the screen. Is the knife? I can prove it with this. It probably has something to do with the knife we found under the table. Knife? Oh, you mean that thing that obviously screams, I am the murder weapon! Byaku, you probably noticed the knife was hidden there. So in order to get it, he moved under the table. He was particularly sensitive to the presence of dangerous items, so I cannot deny that possibility. But how did he notice that there was a knife under the table? And yeah, now we do know this one very well. If he knew beforehand, he probably would have done something about it before the blackout, right? Then, instead of knowing about it beforehand, maybe he saw it right at that moment. Like, for example, he might have seen someone trying to take the knife out from under the table. No, that's not possible. What? You seem rather confident about that. Of course. I have proof to back me up. <laughs> this is almost like a real trial! During the previous statement, there was only one weak spot. But from this point on, there will be various weak spots standing in your way. Oh, okay. No matter how many weak spots there are, there will be only one lifer contradiction, or liar contradiction in the debate at a time. This means there will be false weak spots. If you shoot a false weak spot with a truth bullet, not only will you fail to refute what was said, but you'll also worry your trust with everyone, and influence gauge will take damage. Damn damage. I cannot talk today, apparently. If your influence gauge reaches zero, you will fail, so please be extra careful. You'll have to rely on your own logic to determine which weak spots are actually lies or mistakes. Also, if you concentrate by holding down the R button, you can progress the argument slowly. Please use it whenever you feel like the statements are moving too fast for you to aim. However, this does consume the focus gauge, so please be careful. If you press the star button during these or arguments, you can review the controls. Well then, good luck and have fun. Thank you. Announcer dude. Make my argument. Okay, so we have a knife, a bloodstain, gaps in the floor, but we're, oh, we got a lot of stuff today. Don't we? <laughs> I'm pretty sure I know which one we need. During the black oh no, I need that. Get back here. That sounds correct. If that's the case, during the blackout, Mr. Ham Hams must have seen the killer take the knife. But it was super pitch black. It was so dark I couldn't see my food. <laughs> of course, you were thinking about food. Actually, he had those night vision goggles. I'm fairly certain. No, Yakuya was probably the only one who was able to see in the dark. Why do you say that? He was using those night vision goggles we found under the table. He could have seen what was happening. So, are you saying Yakuya was the one who used those night vision goggles? Yeah, that seems to be the case. Your reasoning is out of focus. What? No, it isn't. No, that's obviously wrong. It should be the other way around. The other way around? Why is that? Seriously? The killer used those night vision goggles, not the Akuya. What? Were you surprised by my hero sudden argument? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I was. It's between you and me, I was also surprised. Just kidding, I'm sorry, and he's a Nagito caliber troll, I see. Now then, when this kind of argument surfaces, you will go into a one on one debate called a rebuttal showdown. In this mode, you have to counter the other person's claim. Draw their weak spot and argue against them. Please counter the other person's remarks with the directional buttons or by swiping the screen. Based on the shape of their remarks, it's important to know when to cut vertically, sideways, or diagonally. And based on that, you can skew the debate's mood to your advantage. On the other hand, if you ignore the other person's remarks, it will skew towards their advantage. In the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, a number that shows the sharpness of your counter is displayed. This is the number of times you can cut remarks during one on or one round of debate. Okay, so that's where Fine Sword comes in. We'll lose counts of sharpness even if you miss, so please be careful. 
When the mood skews to your advantage for a certain length of time, the other per party's argument changes. This means the conversation will develop. If that happens, they will end up divulging some weak spots. However, you cannot normally cut remarks that contain weak spots. Instead, it will skew the mood towards the other party's advantage. Plus, it's going to be very big. Just like a regular debate, please review to any weak spots with the triangle button. When you're using the touchscreen, please argue by swiping with two fingers. Oh, that's awesome. Of course, if you don't have the correct truth blade, you will not be able to cut the opponent's remark. So it's basically BTB from the last game. Oh, huh? what's a truth blade? I'm terribly sorry, it appears there has been a delay in contacting you. I will make sure the person in charge of contacting you takes a very long vacation. Oh, hopefully he doesn't get killed. In this mode, Truth Bullets will be called Truth Blades. Um, that's about it. There won't be any other changes to your handbook menu. Only the name was changed, but don't you think a change in feeling is important? Damn right it is. Variety is the spice of life, after all. If you press the start button during the arguments, you can review the controls. Well then, good luck and have fun. Thanks, I will. My hero, I got this. You're going down. Irons in the storage room. The knife and Duralium case. Okay, so I gotta cut. I see. Oh geez, um... No, 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 what? How'd I fail? Just a little bit more and I can draw something out. Maybe next time. I better win this. Yes, advance. If they use night vision, then they could have killed Yakuya even in the day. In reality, that's so those goggles were planned in advance. The killer brought them to the crime scene. Oh, what? Okay, so that was, um, yeah, that, that hole in the argument. And I accidentally swiped it. Because if they use night vision, then they could have killed Yakuya even in the dark. I mean, in reality, that's so those goggles were planned in advance. The killer brought them to the crime scene. Bam! Tell me to cut through those words. Damn right, that sounded pretty epic, actually. No, Yakuya was definitely the one who brought those night vision goggles. Definitely? But why? Inside the Duralumin case Byakuya had with him during the party. We found a smaller case for storing the night vision goggles. Which means we can assume that the night vision goggles were kept inside that Duralumin case as well. Woohoo! I said assume! Ibuki never uses such clever language. Plus, Yakuya was the only one who could have taken the night vision goggles out of the case. Since he was carrying it around before the blackout in the first place. I see. When you put it like that, it makes sense. Then... Was that knife inside the case, too? If there were night vision goggles inside, it wouldn't be weird for a knife to be in there, too. It would be weird. I am weird, aren't I? At times like this, I'd rather be fantasizing about tonight's main dish. Teru Teru, just no. Ew! You totally mean that in a perverted way! The knife was brought in the Duro... Or a lumen case along with the night vision goggles too. No, that's not possible. The knife was hidden in the dining hall before the party even started. I should be able to prove it. That duct tape sure uh, looks provable. I see. There was duct tape left under the table where the body was found. Huh? Duct tape. It probably hit the knife by duct taping it to the underside of the table. Oh. So that's why we found duct tape there. Though Byakuyo was thorough, even he couldn't have noticed a weapon taped to the underside of the table. This may be off topic, but why was Byakuyo acting so paranoid? Not only did he bring a self-defense kit. That's true. He went above and beyond being a little cautious. Now that you mention it, that applies to the dangerous items he confiscated as well. It's one thing to be a little cautious, but performing a body check is a bit much. He probably knew someone was planning to commit a murder. Are you saying he predicted the murder? Could it be? Was he also in possession of the all-seeing eye? You think so too, right, Hajime? Damn right, and we have proof of why. That's right, Byakuya probably knew that there was a possibility that a murder would occur. Because, if we can find it... 
the murder threat letter. I can prove it with this. Everyone, can you please take a look at this? Hey, what the hell is this? Hajime and I found this in Byakuya's cottage. It looks like a threatened letter someone sent for. So, who's the someone? Nobody besides Monokuma would write such a dumb, threatening letter like that. Wasn't me! Are you sure? The only lies I tell are friendly lies! <laughs> sure they are. Those are still lies! It doesn't matter who wrote it yet. So, Yakuya became paranoid because of this threatening letter? He probably decided to throw a party because of the letter. What do you mean? By gathering everyone in one place, he tried to create a situation where everyone could keep tabs on each other. In doing so, he tried to put the writer of the letter in a situation where they couldn't act. But the letter might have been just a little prank. As long as he was determined not to let any of us die, he couldn't take that risk. His strong sense of responsibility made him believe the letter was legitimate. You should have told us you received a threatening letter. If he had, we would have panicked. Yakuya probably knew that too. So, he tried to do something about it without telling anyone? I see. Strong sense of responsibility as our leader was his idea. Screw that noise! Who the hell wrote that letter? Well, obviously, the killer. The killer. Is it really one of us? Yes! And the killer isn't an it, it's a person. I guess it could also be an animal, but you get my point. Who is it? Among us, who's the one who killed Byakuya? Enough already! Show yourself, you coward! If they were willing to come forward, they never would have committed a murder in the first place! But I still can't believe it. Someone in this room killed Byakuya? There's no way I can believe that yet. Um. Pardon me. Can I say something, please? What is it, Miss Sonia? I regret that I must return to this topic, but I just realized something concerning the night vision goggles. If Byakuya was indeed wearing those goggles, how did the killer manage to navigate in the dark? You're right. They wouldn't have been able to see anything without the night vision goggles. But if the murderer had the goggles when they took the knife, then how did Byakuya see them? Even if the knife bore some sort of mark, it would have been difficult to see it in that darkness. Uh-uh-uh, we know why. No, the killer definitely used a mark. And because of this mark, the killer was able to get the knife from under the table into his hands. And that was because of the glowing paint. I see! What if the glowing paint was the mark? With that, you'd be able to get the knife even in the dark. In actuality, the knife we found under the table and the duct tape stuck to the underside of the table were both marked with glowing paint, right? Does that mean the killer painted them in advance? But painting them with glowing paint? It's as if they knew the blackout was going to happen. They had to have already known. That's why they used the glowing paint as a mark. Which means whoever set up the blackout is the killer. That seals it. The killer is whoever was in the office with the circuit breaker. Which means it was you, Peko Pekoyama! <laughs> Peko killed poor Byakuya? Was this island not big enough for two glasses wearers? I don't think that's true, but whatever. Oh, I guess she's not. How can you believe her so easily? But with Peko's height, I don't think she'd be able to reach the circuit breaker in the office. I don't care about a technicality like that. Peko's the one who tripped the breaker and caused the blackout. By tripping the breaker directly from the office, Peko was the one who caused the blackout? Is that really what happened? No, I don't believe so. After this debate, blue-colored weak spots will start appearing. If you, er, if we call the weak spots you've been seeing up until now, agree, er, argue spots, the blue-colored weak spots will be agree spots. 
When shooting a grease spots of true bullets, you need to flip your way of thinking. Instead of arguing that the other person's testimony contains lies or mistakes, please fire the true bolt that can prove that person's testimony is correct. Hmm, that's actually quite interesting. When your true bullets merge with their weakness, it will become a logically sound agreement. <laughs> Isn't it a little hot in here? From now on, you must infer whether it's best to argue or agree based on what's being debated. If you start, or if you press the start button during the argument, you can review the controls. Well then, good luck and have fun. Well, thank you, game. It was very nice of you to explain it for me. Anyways, what seems good here is not Teru Teru's account, not Chiaki's account. This is probably a good one. Because I was not in the office. Uh, we know where she was. Nekumaru's account helps prove that. No, I think Pekko is telling the truth. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me you're crushing on Pekko. Well, no. And yet, it's nothing like that at all. Nekumaru's account is actually Pekko's alibi. Uh, I've been trying to use them too many times, but the door just won't open at all! It's true. Someone was occupying the bathroom for a long time shortly after the party started, and it was finally freed up after Byakuya's body was discovered. Uh, then the person who was in the bathroom that whole time was actually... Everyone else besides Pekka was in the dining hall after the party started, right? I see. So there's no way anybody else could have locked themselves in the bathroom except Pekko. I... I guess that would be... true. You locked yourself in the commode? You should have said so earlier! There's no way she'd actually say that. Gosh, you are so insensitive. If she locked herself in the bathroom for that long, there's no doubt. It's shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's no way she'd admit it. There's no way she'd admit she was taking a shit. Oh my god, Nekumaru, you're even worse. Hey, weren't you guys taught any basic manners, or were you raised in a locker room? He actually probably was. I'm sorry. It's fine. How about we stop talking about this and move on to something else? Don't worry. The smell wasn't that strong. I used the bathroom right after you, so you can trust me. I said it's fine. But still, you were in the bathroom for a really long time. Did you get food poisoning or something? As soon as I stepped into the office, I felt this sudden rush of pain in my stomach. Because of that, I was unable to leave the bathroom, including when the blackout occurred. Hey, how did it feel to do your business in the dark? Did you get excited? Seriously, stop it. But still, your stomach pain. Was that really just a coincidence? Hey, what's the deal? Don't butt into other people's business, especially if you didn't do any investigating. <laughs> I'm only butting in because you fucking idiots are out of your element. Stop this childish nonsense. Just what do you mean by coincidence? What I mean is, is it possible someone slipped her some laxatives? L laxatives? If so, the killer could have tripped the breaker as soon as that girl left the office, don't you think? I see. That might have happened. The question is whether Pekko's stomach ache was a coincidence, or if someone intentionally caused it. Depending on the answer, the outcome of this trial could change drastically. Well then, we better find out, and hope it's to our advantage. And a knife, an AC timer, knife fishing goggles, an embarrassing pose, and party dishes. Well, the laxatives would happily have to be in the food, so... I don't remember eating anything weird. Now that you mention it... You brought food to the office, right? Just a little bit from the dining room. There might have been some laxatives in it, don't you think? Mm, I don't think so. No, oh, no. yes! No, it's impossible that laxatives were slipped into the food in the dining hall. 
Mainly because everyone else was eating it, especially Akane. Because Pekka wasn't the only one who ate that food. Akane ate some of it too. Some of it? Probably most of it. If the food had laxatives in it, I'm pretty sure Akane would have had stomach issues as well. I feel totally fine. Like I said, the, the dishes are innocent. Don't go making weird accusations. I apologize for causing a scene. Fuyuhiko should apologize, not you. He's the one who made the laxative accusation. What the fuck did you say, bitch? Cease this bickering. Let's just dismiss Peko's stomach ache as a coincidence and go back to discussing the blackout. Yeah, yeah. We already know that, you trashy skank. You don't have to tell us. Oh, Hiyoko, come on. Change from the ultimate bad attitude to the ultimate good attitude, please. Trashy skank? As long as the murder happened during the blackout, then the blackout itself is what's actually important. So we need to make it clear how that blackout occurred. Hmm, how the blackout occurred? That's a good question, but I have an idea of how. And it put it right on the one I want. Perfect. Because it's either these... Irons in the storage room, or, um, I'm trying to think, uh, the AC timers. That's what it seems to me. Probably messed with the breaker. It does not have to be the breaker. They may have tampered with the power supply and transmitters. Not what I want. Ah, yes, I'll agree with you. I agree with that. It's just as my Lou said. The blackout was caused by a power surge. Evident from those other things I noted during um, the little discussion there they were having. Of course, that's not a coincidence. Someone caused it intentionally. Which is why those three irons were arranged to cause the blackout. When you found them right after the blackout, the irons were still on, right? So by leaving those irons on in the storage room, they deliberately caused a power surge. Yeah, it seems that's how the killer caused the blackout. STUPID FOOL! What? Oh no, not Nekumaru too! Hold on a second, let me speak too! What the heck? You say the irons in the storage room were used to trigger the blackout? That's inexcusable! Why? Why is it inexcusable? I'm confused. Okay, yeah, the AC timers are probably helpful here. For the killer to turn the irons on. You're saying they went all the way to the store, and that means everyone who was in the dine when the blackout occurred can't be a suspect. Mm. No, just because people were in the dining room. No. Doesn't mean they're not a suspect. Thank you, Hajime. But the people in the dining hall weren't able to copy the irons caused, and the killer had to go to the store. Oh room crap! To turn on the irons. Now do you intend to take back what you said? Oh no! I'm sure the irons were responsible for the blackout, but that shouldn't be the only reason. I kind of failed there. The irons caused the blackout. Come on! cut through those words! But it still sounds so epic when he says that. The irons are just one reason the blackout occurred. But they weren't the direct trigger. Exactly. The direct trigger was when the air conditioners in the dining hall and office clicked on. The air conditioners! <laughs> like how he's so upset, he's like, what? The timers for both air conditioners were set to 11.30 p.m. 11.30 p.m.? Mr. Ham Ham's died around that time, too! I see. When the timers activated the air conditioners, the breaker was tripped and caused a blackout. I see. I understand. Indubitably. That is so not him. Indubitably? They probably checked the old building's energy usage in advance and used the irons to nearly max it out. So once they set the air conditioner's timers, they just had to wait until they started up on their own. If so, even if Pekka was in the office, it still would have been possible to cause a blackout indubitably. Indubitably? Miss Sonia, you're not you too. Regarding the energy usage, they probably asked Monokuma about it. Dun dun dun! Is she right? Such a hateful bear! You deserve to die a thousand deaths! Is that a hint towards the last game? Ah! A thousand, you say? If I died that many times, I might really stay dead! 
you know? Shut up! You guys just stay quiet! I couldn't have prevented the blackout even if I was in the office. Even so, I feel regret. If I was in the office, I could have reset the breaker in time. And maybe the murder wouldn't have occurred. No. The breaker in the office was built into a high area of the wall that's impossible to reach. Kind of a poor design choice, don't you think? Resetting the breaker in that darkness would have been impossible, no matter what. Sounds like you don't need to blame yourself. Even so, the killer is so sly. I'm starting to worry we may never actually find them. It's alright. You don't have to worry. Why? Because they're just a petty killer, right? They can't defeat symbols of hope like you guys. Huh? There's no way everybody will lose now. This little incident will just be a stepping stone for you all. This is getting really creepy. Why the music change? In the end, hope always wins. That's what I believe. Uh, Nagito? W what happened to you? Huh? What do you mean? Well, you have been saying this whole time that there's no way a killer could be among us. Oh, is that so? Well... Let's just put that minor detail aside for now and talk about the incident. For now, we found out how the blackout occurred. But the question is, who caused it, right? That's true. Anybody could have hid and set the timers for the air conditioners. Setting up the irons in the storage room could have been done before Byakuya set foot in the old building. What a shame. Any one of us is capable of that. What are you implying? He's just saying. After all this time, we still haven't made any progress. Huh? Even though we have been arguing for so long? Fortunately, it's the truth. Despite the fact that we've discussed this at length, there's not even one clue that leads to the killer. But that might be because there's no way any of us could be a killer. Don't give me that, Nagito. You're changing your story again? Anyway. I have an idea about what we all should do at this point. Has anyone thought about our situation like this? Instead of surviving by doubting others, isn't it better to get killed for believing in others? No! Doesn't that mean... Are you saying we should all just give up and die? Nagito, there's definitely something wrong with you. <laughs> you guys only think there's something wrong with me. Because there's something wrong with you. Suspecting each other like this. There's no way that's healthy behavior. Let's stop this already. We don't have to find out who the killer is. Healthy? Humans doubt each other. They always have and always will. I can't stand this anymore. I don't want to do this to my friends. I... I don't want to do this either. <laughs> Me too. Stop it. If everyone acts like this, I... I'm gonna... Everyone calm down. We're all friends, aren't we? There's no way one friend would murder another. Then why did Byakuya die? Who cares? Let's just give up already. No! Stop it! There are no clues that lead to the killer anyway. Not a single one. That's wrong. I think... You think? Did you say something? Cuz, we've already found a clue that might point to who the killer is. You know who the killer is? The killer? I don't know. But we do have a clue about a suspicious person. I think. I see. Then care to tell me... What's this clue you're talking about? First of all, let's try thinking about how the killer was able to obtain the knife during the blackout. Didn't we already cover that? They use glowing paint as a mark. No, not that. I mean before that. Before? Is she asking how the killer got close to that table? Even if they had to obtain the knife by relying on the glow from the paint in order to do that, they'd have to get close to the table, that's right, because the cloth would actually obscure the glow. You need to get close to that table while it was still dark. Let's try examining the situation. 
My hero's diagram might be useful here. No, it definitely will be useful here. The diagram of where everyone was standing before the blackout, right? Um, here it is. I was 100% sure on that one. Just as I thought, this diagram is a clue. Who the killer is and how they were able to move to the di their, the table in the dark. It's clearly shown in this diagram. First, we need to discuss how the killer was able to move to the table in the dark. The killer probably used something to help them move in the dark. I'm pretty sure we know what this is, too. I can just move my reticle a bit. There we go. Killer must have used the desk lamp to move to that table in the dark. The desk lamp? I hope you don't mean they turned on a light or something. There was a blackout. There's no way the killer could have used the desk lamp. Of course, there's no way they used the desk lamp to light. The killer actually used the power cord. I can prove it with this. They didn't turn the desk lamp on. They used its power cord. Power cord? They could have felt their way to that table using the power cord, right? By doing that, the killer was able to move to the table and use the glowing paint to find the knife. And there's only one person here who could have done that. I don't want to believe it. The only person here who could have possibly done it is 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 our favorite resident troll you're the only one nagita it was you wasn't it M me judging from everyone's positions before the blackout the only person near the power cord was you which means the only one who could have felt their way to the table using the power cord was Nagito! <laughs> That's just a coincidence! But still, you had a chance, right? A chance to hide the knife under the table? She's not wrong. Nagito's chance to hide the knife under the table was when he was cleaning. I see! Nagito, weren't you cleaning the dining hall all morning? If so, you would have had a chance to hide the knife. That's... If you factor in the power cord and the time you spent cleaning, you're the only one who could have done it. Seriously! That's all just a coincidence! If it was just one coincidence, it'd be fine. But when it's one right after another, I wonder... Is something about that even possible? Could it be? Did you give yourself cleaning duty on purpose so you could hide the knife under the table? Now that you mention it, Nagito did prepare the drawing to pick who cleaned the dining hall. Oh my lord, is making more sense now. To be honest, I already prepared a drawing because I assumed something like this would happen. To go to the trouble of preparing this, just what did you think would happen? Whoever draws the chopstick with the red mark on it will be in charge of cleaning, okay? Does that sound fair? You rigged the drawing, didn't you? That's how you got picked to clean the dining hall, isn't it? I don't know if you're the killer or not, but regardless, it proves that you're suspicious, right? <laughs> if that's the case, that strange speech you made earlier, that was part of your plan, too. You got us to lower our guard, and tried to hide the fact that you did it, didn't you, you motherfucker? Well, just admit it already! <laughs> Nagito, tell me you object to this. Frankly, I don't want to believe it either. We investigated together. You were so kind. I can't believe you're the one who killed Yakuya. <laughs> Nagito, say something!
How wonderful! How beautiful it is! Huh? Uh, it reminds me of a certain someone. Those eyes! The moment Nagito's eyes. The darkness in his eyes shone brightly as if layers upon layers of darkness were folding into each other. As if hope and despair had been crudely mixed together. Let's cut to the chase. You're correct. It was my doing all along. I'm the one who hid the knife under the table before the party started. I'm the one who used the power cord to find my way to the table in the dark. And of course, I'm the one who caused the blackout. After all, there's no way I'd knowingly whip out a knife in front of everyone, right? Uh, is it just me, or does he seem a little nuts right now? No, it's not just you. But I never expected Yakuya to have night vision gods. Because of that, we had ourselves a little scuffle under the table. And, well, we all saw how that played out. With a twist ending like this, I think we can all agree this ended up being a very interesting mystery. <laughs> Byakuya performed it admirably. Just stop it already! Seriously! What the hell happened to you? Don't tell me. Is this your true nature? Were you lying to us this entire time? Lie? That's outrageous! There's no way someone like me could have invited you guys. They understand better than anyone else that I'm told to Too arrogant to have dreams or cling to hope. Too disdainful to actually try at anything. I've made peace with the fact that I'm a lowly, stupid, insignificant human who can't do anything right. Holy crap! He's totally the type of guy who spent his childhood killing neighborhood pets! What? He seems like the sort of person whose eyes light up while watching Friday the 13th. Just like me. I don't know whether that's a good thing. Should I be scared of Sonya? That's quite the hobby you have there. But, like, now's not really the time to bring it up. Th this guy, is he... Is he the real Nagito? Well, he is standing up. Hey, Nagito. If you were behind all of this, then did you also send that threatening letter? Yep, I sure did. There's nobody else on this island whose handwriting is that painful to look at, right? But why would you send a threatening letter in the first place? I think... somewhere deep in my heart. I was probably hoping to find someone who would stop my evil deeds. I did not mean to do that. Well, I bet if that really was my reason, at least some of you would feel sorry for me. Are you making fun of us? By threatening Yakuya, Nagito was likely able to manipulate his actions. And how about the old looking building near the hotel? Well, if it's just cleaning, leave it to me. I'm actually pretty good at it. In doing so, Nagito was able to manipulate everyone to the scene where the murder would occur. Am I wrong? Or not. That reminds me. Nagito was the one who suggested I guard the office. Well, not only is the storage room packed with lots of stuff, it's hard to see in there and full of cobwebs. But the real reason was because he didn't want her to see the irons on. I was so busy cleaning the dining hall that I didn't even have time to clean the storage room. If you stayed in there for a long time, I think it would be bad for your health. Oh wait, that wasn't... That was Hajime, oh well. In that case, why don't you guard the keys in front of the office? Oh, I get it. If Paco was guarding the storage room, Nagito wouldn't have been able to use the irons. The threatening letter, along with all your suggestions, was all a trap to manipulate us. Yep. That's true, too. But you're wrong about one thing. Uh, huh? What? I didn't need to rig the drawing for cleaning duty, you know? If that's true, then how did you conveniently get picked for cleaning duty? 
There's only one reason. I see. Well, there's no way I'd expect you to remember it. A worthless talent for a worthless human. What's up this inferiority complex? Anyways, Nagito's talent. I believe his talent is the ultimate tr no! The ultimate lucky student. I see! You're the ultimate lucky student. Then... Did you? That's right. I just trusted my luck. I trusted I'd be picked for cleaning duty. You just relied on your luck? It's not just luck. It's true my talent sucks. But I'm still the ultimate lucky student, you know? Huh? I'm left with a red mark? Haha, <laughs> for someone called the ultimate lucky student? You don't seem to have very good luck right now. At the time, Hajime said I wasn't lucky. But it was actually the opposite. I was lucky. That's why I got picked for cleaning duty. Just like I wanted. Enough. That... I don't care about that anymore. More importantly, why did you kill Byakuya? Answer me! Byakuya was a very capable leader. For someone like him to get killed? The despair brings. It's only fitting that you symbols of hope should use his death as a stepping stone to shine even brighter. That was my only motivation. Oh! You're not making any sense! It's fine. Let's start the damn boat already. I'm ready to fucking kill this site. Please! Monokuma! Fuck! <laughs> that reaction! Um, 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 how should I put this? Um, it is Nagito. Um, what do you say? He's already confessed, hasn't he? It doesn't mean he's the killer, though. Then keep your mouth shut. Your ugly face is stressing me out. It makes me want to puke. <laughs> ah, I'm sorry. Um, for now, might I suggest we listen to what she has to say? Agreed. But we know who the killer is. Simply listening is acceptable. However, I won't allow this to end with mere play. Now then, let us lift the curtain for our bloody spectacle. Oh, you're still awesome. From this point on, lines of white noise will appear to disrupt your reactions. Your true bullets will disappear if they touch these lines, so think of them as obstacles in your debate. Similar to, like, the, the words that popped up randomly in the last game, I'm guessing. Please time your truth bullets just right so they won't get interrupted by the white noise. By the way, if the difficulty is set to gentle, white noise won't appear at all. Well, it's not. In that case, all it means is this explanation didn't mean anything at all. It had no meaning whatsoever. Oh, please don't worry. I'm not going to fall into despair. <laughs> Even though it's meaningless, allow me to say one more thing. In this debate, you won't be able to shoot down the white noise. That will be explained later. If you press the star button during these arguments, you can review the controls. Well then, good luck and have fun. Damn right I will. I have this. I got this. We all know I'm good. Well, I'm gonna take a while to guess and say it probably has something to do with her account. The killer is so obviously Nagito! He has already confessed. I keep trying to shoot this, the white noise down. That bastard Nagito is the one who did it. He killed Byakuya with a knife he hit. Oh, never mind. Thanks for wasting our time, Skanky bitch! Oh. Then let's prepare to cast our votes. Oh. I don't think she's a skanky bitch. What does Mikan think it's strange, or why does she? Because she must know something that contradicts the crime scene. I just thought I'd let it play out this time. No, Mikan's uh, report says something different. Sorry. 
That knife might not be the murder weapon. That's what you wanted to say, right, Nikon? What the hell are you talking about? It's obvious the knife was the murder weapon. But based on the entry of things on Yaki's body, the actual weapon should be roughly five millimeters in diameter. Five millimeters in diameter? That's like way skinnier than a knife. Hey, that better be true. If you screwed up, I'll sell your fucking ass to a whorehouse. <laughs> Not a whorehouse? Hey, why are you threatening her? Is this what you're trying to say, Mikan? As long as we can't prove that the knife is the murder weapon, you can't assume that I'm the killer. What are you saying? No one else can be the killer. It has to be you. Hey, don't blame me. Mikan's the one who said it. And I think she's getting at something important. <laughs> Are you still hiding something? Uh, hiding? Like, during the blackout, did something happen between you and Byakuya that we don't know about? Who knows? After all this, what else do you intend to hide? Jeez, the moment your back's against the wall, you get all silent. You piss me off! What happened during the blackout? Hmm... If you cross your eyes like this, it gives you double vision! Oh my god. Don't get distracted! Our lives are at stake, you know? Huh? Whose life is at stake? Seriously, how long is it gonna take for you to understand the damn rules? At least, Kazuichi, um, seems a little smarter than Hiro. Nobody can see in the dark, no matter how hard you think about it. The truth is beyond your sight. Don't you think that's a pretty clever metaphor? Despite the fact that it came from me? No, that's not it. Not it? What's not it? It might be beyond sight, but now that I think about it, the truth is beyond our sight. No, that can't be it. There should be some way to find out what happened in the dark. But like I said, it maybe is beyond our sight, but not our hearing. I can prove it with this. We couldn't see what happened in the dark. I'm pretty sure someone could have heard it. Isn't that right, Ibuki? Oh, real? Don't act so surprised. Oh my god. You were the one who told me, remember? How everyone was shouting during the blackout? A everyone, calm down. We gotta stay calm in a situation like this. Ah, don't step on my feet. What the hell? What's going on here? This is... Ow! Turn the damn lights on! I can't eat like this, you know! He said, ow! You guys? Where are you? W wasn't the blackout just in the kitchen? Perhaps the breaker overloaded? Hold on a sec. I'll go along the wall and do something about it. Such perceptive hearing. Impressive. I'd expect no less from the ultimate musician. It's a good thing your ears are awesome because your face, style, figure, and personality totally suck. I don't agree at all. You keep your opinions yourself. <laughs> You've cut me deep with your knife of truth. However, after hearing what Byakuya and Nagito said in the dark... What the hell? What's going on here? Th this is... Ow! It almost sounds like Byakuya fought back against Nagito or something. Well, you saw the gear he had in his dur Duralumen case. I kept thinking it was Duralium. Or Duralium. Well, that's actually what happened. Huh? It's a sign of respect for Ibuki's talent. I have a small confession to make. I was actually shoved out from under the table by Byakuya. He shoved you out? Just as the blackout occurred. I hurried to duck under the table and grab the knife, but Byakuya, wearing his night vision goggles, caught me and shoved me right out from under the table. That's right. I'm so incompetent that I couldn't even grab the knife. So Byakuya stopped him when he was trying to get the knife, and he got shoved out from under the table before he could even grab it? Damn, Byakuya really is the ultimate in everything he does. Well, it sounds plausible, I mean, just from listening to what they both said at the time. What the hell? What's going on here? 
How do you get stabbed? Um, this will fall back to something else I think we discovered a little earlier. This is... Ow! I could interpret it like that. No, actually. I don't know really think about it. That sounds like exactly what happened. After getting shoved out from under the table, I was just as confused as you guys. I lost sight of the glowing paint. I didn't even know where the power cord was. Before I realized it, the lights had come back on. Yaku's body was lying under the table. Huh, hold on! Are you saying you're not the killer? From the very beginning. The idea to throw a party, hiding the knife, setting up the blackout. It was all going according to plan. But unfortunately, my plan failed. And all thanks to Byakuya's night vision goggles. What happened after that? Even I don't know. You failed? Th then you're not the one who killed Byakuya? Then we're right back to square one! Dun, dun, dun! How can that be? We spent all this time talking back and forth! What other word is brimming with so much despair? But you can't give up! You need to have hope! Do your best and move forward! Rising to the challenge again and again is why you guys are the symbols of hope! This is getting a little creepy. Er, is Nakito really not the killer? I can actually believe it. This guy really the Nagito I knew before? No, there's no way I can say that. I just thought I knew him, but this whole time I didn't know anything about this guy. I didn't know his true character. The symbol's that. But now is not the time for me to dwell on that. We need to find Biaki's killer by any means possible. Because if we don't, we... We will all die here, damn it, because people die when they are killed! I went there again. What? Well now. Now then, the course trial has reached its climax, but it's okay. Here's a question for you. Well, what's this? Those of you who figured out who it is, how about you try out the guess the killer challenge? Whoever fails to guess the right killer will have their save data melt away like butter. But if you guess right, I'll reward you with ten million dollars! A billion? Jeez. There's ten billion? Of course, for those of you who don't know who the killer is, you can just continue on. Well, then, what are you gonna do? I'm pretty sure I don't know who the killer is. True kidding, you can make a choice! A way you could be able to guess who the killer is. <laughs> and of course! There's no ten billion dollars either! Oh, screw you, Monokuma! You're so evil! Villain, you truly are a villain! We all know Monokuma's a villain. He's cruising, too. Alright, I guess that's it for today's episode. If you did enjoy the episode, please do like the video and or leave a comment. If you've yet to subscribe to my channel, please do so for more Danganronpa 2. Goodbye, and everyone, friends, meisters, have yourselves a wonderful day. I'll see you next time on Let's Play Dang and Run Platoon. Goodbye to Spar. <laughs>